2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Hey guys, um, I'm Sarah. For those of you guys that don't know me, um, I've, I've gotten the opportunity to speak once before to you guys. I wish I could be there in person and see your faces and hear your stories. Um, but this is this is better than nothing, so I'm excited to be able to share with you guys today. Um, I'm a friend of Michael's, and he is the one that reached out and um, gave me the opportunity to share today. And what was really cool is when he told me what the subject was, um, that it's being you know renewed in our minds by the power of the Spirit. As I began to study that, as I looked up the scriptures on it and prayed through them, it was um, it was pretty incredible how much it spoke first to my own heart. And um, so as I share today, just know that I'm in this, I'm in this with you guys and, um, and I'm not talking at you or preaching at you today. I'm, I'm truly kind of sitting by you and just trying to receive um, from God's word and find freedom and healing in my own mind and my own heart. And so um, there is encouragement in God's word, especially when it comes to this subject. And so, yeah, I'm excited to kind of go there and, and just really break down some of these scriptures and, and really believe that God is going to um, offer hope today and just really begin to spark some freedom in our hearts. So when I first thought of the subject, there's a few key scriptures that kind of come to mind. And Romans Romans is a big book that talks about, you know, walking in step with the Spirit and that sort of thing. So Romans chapter 12 is actually the first place that I'm going to that I'm going to start today um, on this subject. So in verse 2 it says it says don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. And then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And I mean, this isn't even in my notes, but as I think about that scripture and I think about the world that we live in, I really believe that that God is looking for a group of people that are not going to look at the world for how we should act and how we should talk and how we should behave. He's looking for a group of people that will chase after him enough. Um, to actually have the world be, you know, ministered to by that, by by the way that we love people, by the way that we treat people, um, the way that we don't follow what the world does, that alone has power um, to bring transformation to our world. But it's not going to happen if we look around and and we watch how other people are acting or behaving. It only comes when we chase after God, when we let Him bring transformation in us first, and then it and then it goes into the world. So. Um, I just, I just think all of us need to sit on that today. Just this idea of, of what we could do, the impact we could make if we stopped looking at the world and what and what's going on in it, and instead we looked to God and said, "What do you want me to do in the midst of all of this?" Um, but on the subject of transformation or renewing our thoughts, you know, the biggest thing that I think when I read that scripture is that transformation it has to take place in our mind before we'll ever see it in our behavior. Um, some of you guys are probably, you know, you're trying to kick some pretty, um, pretty challenging habits in your life, some addictions in your life. Some of you um, might just be ready for something different. You, you're sick of the way that that life has been, and you want you want something more. You, um, you know that there must be something more, and and that's what you're looking for. Um, and no matter where you find yourself in that, it always has to start in our minds. What we think about, what we allow our thoughts to be, will show up in our behavior. And that's why he says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. He didn't say, let him transform you by changing the way that you act or by changing your behavior. That comes as a result of changing the way that we think. Otherwise, it's just this behavior modification sort of um, act that we're putting on, but no transformation is taking place. We can't be transformed outwardly without being transformed inwardly. Um, so that's what we're going after is that inward transformation that will affect the way that we act. 
if we want our lives to look different, we have to examine what we think about. We have to, we have to examine our thought life. Whatever you're consistently thinking about, that's what your life is going to reflect in one way or another. And it might start small. It might start in these kind of compromises. And um, I'm just, I'm thinking about this over and over and over and dwelling on it. And then you, you begin to act on it and you might not jump into it full fledged, whatever it is, but it's a small compromise. Maybe you start hanging around people that you knew, man, I'm not supposed to be hanging around. They always are a bad influence or they bring me down. But instead, when we're, when we're consumed by these certain thoughts, those doors start to open slowly and gradually. Um, but before you know it, I mean, you're back fully in it. Some of you guys know this, this is, um, this is your story. And so we have to, we have to be willing to stop those thoughts at the beginning and not allow them to just become all consuming. Otherwise, we definitely are going to act on them one way or another. Here's the good news. Um, here's the good news. That scripture said that it's a work of God, that he is the one that brings transformation, right? Romans 12 to that scripture we just read, it said to let God transform you into a new person, let God. So that, that does mean that we have some part to play. Like we have to let him, we have to be willing to allow him to do that work in us but we aren't the ones that are able to accomplish the work. It's just submitting ourselves to him, to the work that he wants to do in us. Um, our, our part in this really is an invitation. You know, you have to be willing to submit to the spirit of God and to invite him into those places. You can't, you can't have areas of your life that are off limits to God. You can have everything else, God, but this, this, this hurt in me is too deep. It's, it's not something I want to I want to think about or, or um, let people into or, or let you into God. And um, those will always lead us down roads of destruction. We have to be willing to invite him into every single space that's in our heart. The key to this is, is learning how to walk in step with God. That's kind of how scripture words it is to walk in step with the spirit. In the same book in Romans, um, just a couple chapters earlier, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, I want to look at a few verses in that too, starting in verse 5. And this is a, a book, um, like I said, that just talks about the transformation that God can bring. So this is what um, this is what it says, starting in verse five. Those who let their sinful old selves tell them what to do, live under that power of their old sinful selves. I just put yourself in this as you're reading it. Um, I mean, I'll do the same thing. Like, when am I letting that old self? Um, tell me what to do, right? Like that puts a different spin on it for me where I'm like, whoa, I don't want to be told what to do um, by by someone that's going to misdirect me, someone that's going to lead me into destruction. If that was a person and I knew that no matter what they say to me, it's going to lead me to a bad place, I, I wouldn't listen to them. But because it's my own old sinful self, it's so familiar that sometimes it's harder to identify. So again, put yourself in this. Those who let their old sinful selves tell them what to do, live under that power, that power of their old sinful selves. But those who let the Holy Spirit tell them what to do are under his power. If your sinful old self is the boss over your mind, it leads to death. But if the Holy Spirit is the boss over your mind, it leads to life and peace. The mind that thinks only of ways to please the sinful old self is fighting against God. It is not able to obey God's laws. It never can. Those who do what their sinful old selves want, what they want to do, cannot please God. So, man, based on that scripture, I think we have to recognize that we are under one power or the other. We are under one influence or the other. We can think that, man, this is me and I'm making my, my own decisions or whatever. But the reality is, is that you are either submitting to the power of your old self, um, that sinful self, or you're submitting to the power of the Holy Spirit. And the reality, too, is that that old self, it leads to death. That's what it says. And, and that is the truth. You guys, there's, you know, there's death that takes place um, as we know it, you know, but there's, a, you can see it physically. I'm sure some of you guys have, have been through that and, and you've lost loved ones um, and it's devastating. But then there's also a spiritual death that happens. And I've seen that, too, in, in friends and family that I love when, um, when sin sort of takes over, like you literally can see a death that takes place in them, that, that the light that was in them is flickered out. Um, and both, you know, both are, are just a devastating thing to watch, let alone walk through yourself. So recognize that up front. You're submitting to one power or the other. One power is going to lead you to death. 
It might be physical. It might be spiritual. And one power, the Holy Spirit, is going to lead to life and it's going to lead to peace. Peace in the midst of whatever you're going through. Peace when you don't know what the answer is for the situation that you're in. Peace when uh, financial bills are not met. Peace when you have, you know, diagnosis from the doctors that um, there seems to be no cure for. Peace when relationships are, are rocky. Peace for any situation that you're in. That's what happens when we submit to the power of the Holy Spirit, when we let him do the work in our heart. Here's what, here's what I know from my own life. I can tell what power I'm submitted to based on what I'm consistently thinking about. Consistently thinking about. What are those things that, um, that are in my head most of the time when I'm, when I'm driving or when, um, you know, when I'm home or whatever? When you're sitting there and you're, and you're thinking, you're allowing thoughts to consume your mind, are they, are they thoughts that lead you to a place of peace? Or are they leading you to that place where you just know, like, man, this is not going to a good place? And in the, the fleshly side of us, that old side of us, there are like temporary pleasures associated with that, um, where it feels good for the moment, or it um, it's fun to entertain, but it's it's a fleshly fun. It's not it's not that deep spirit level of peace. And again, it's like this weird hook that the enemy does, where he makes it enticing enough, where he makes it. Um, you know, seemingly fun enough to get you hooked and then again to lead you to a place of death. He's a deceiver. Um, he's good at what he does. And so he knows how to get you into a place where you're, well, you're compromising or um, really just allowing those thoughts to consume your mind. All the while, he's trying to get you to a place of death. But he, he doesn't tell us that, right? All we do is we get focused on that fun that, that is at the beginning or the pleasure that we feel at the beginning. And a lot of times, man, that pleasure that you feel, or <clears throat> especially with addiction, it's it's you're medicating something deeper that's going on. And um, when that high wears off, it's you have to you have to face those realities again. You have to face the hurts again. And and even for a moment, that high allows it to numb kind of where you're at. And um, but that's not that's not living. That's not actually experiencing a peace that goes beyond what you can understand. And that's what's available through a walk with the Holy Spirit. That kind of peace where he doesn't, he doesn't remove all the problems in our life, but he gives us peace to endure the problem. He walks with us, right by us as we walk through it. And I, I don't know about you, but I would rather have that than, than try to numb myself to what's going on. I would rather be, you know, fully aware of what's going on, but also fully at peace because I know who's with me in it. I hope that's where you're at today, too. I think one thing that's important to understand here is temptation, um, <clears throat> because there is there is a difference between lingering in a in a thought um, a thought of that old sinful self and being tempted. So temptation on this side of heaven is something that we will never um, avoid. It will always be pursuing us. It will always um, be trying to to take us out. Um, and that's, I think, why this this time for me was so timely, because I feel like there are seasons of temptation. I feel like there are seasons of assault where the enemy just comes at you with full force. Um, and I really do believe I'm in a season that's kind of like that. And I go through those. I, I don't know if you guys sense that in your own lives, but I'll go through like waves of those seasons where um, there's there's seasons where it's like, man, this, you know, you can you can still feel a little temptation or whatever, but you're walking in victory, you're walking in freedom. And then there's these other ones where you're like, it just seems like every turn there's something, you know, that I can see the enemy doing to try and, and take me out. Just see what he can, what he can get away with. Am I willing to, to budge on, on anything? And temptation looks different for all of us. We all have different places that are weak, places that are vulnerable. Um, and he knows what those are. So what I want to say is I don't want you to feel, um, I don't want you to beat yourself up or feel condemned or allow shame and guilt to overwhelm you when you start uh, when you start to feel um, tempted in a certain way. So, like, what does that look like? Usually, it's like a thought that'll come into your mind, and it seems like sometimes it's out of nowhere, where you're like, "Whoa!" I mean, that that wasn't even something that I was, you know, that I was thinking about, and it comes out of nowhere. Sometimes it'll be like physical stuff he'll put in front of you, people that you haven't seen in a while that you know will lead you into a certain place you don't want to be, or. Um, or just something that you're flipping through on your phone, you're scrolling through on your phone and, and something comes up and it immediately puts an image in your mind of something, you know. Those are opportunities to fall into temptation and that's where you get to make a decision on what you're going to do with that temptation. If you continue 
to put yourself in a situation where that temptation has room to grow. So you continue to look through some of those photos that you see as you're scrolling through Facebook that you know are, are creating that, um, that feeling of being tempted to go down a road that you know is not honoring God. It doesn't glorify God. It really doesn't lead to life. Or even if it's one of those crazy thoughts that just comes in and then you allow that thought to kind of go a little deeper and spread a little bit more so and, and just really kind of um, allow whatever that, that fantasy world that you're in to kind of um, just to grow uh, those are ways where now you you do have some responsibility in that. You can't avoid temptation. That's going to come. But what you can control is what you do with the temptation. Are you going to give in to that? Even if it's just in your thought life. Um, or are you going to are you going to shut it down? 2 Corinthians 10 at chapter 5 it says that we capture the rebellious thoughts and we teach them to obey Christ. So there is something we have to do. Nobody's going to catch your rebellious thoughts but you. Um, and I'm just, I'm here to tell you, man, if you sit in a place where you allow, allow those rebellious thoughts to grow and it's only in your mind and you're the only one that knows about it, they will want to give birth to sin at some point. Um, they're not going to be satisfied with just staying in your thought life, right? That's the first thing we talked about was if this is out of control, it will show up in your behavior. You have to get your thought life under control. When temptation comes, which it will, put it in its place. Sometimes for me, it's literally just saying the name of Jesus out loud. And I might have to say that over and over and over until I feel that temptation lift. It says that if we humble ourselves before God and in God's word, if we resist the devil, he will flee. But we have to humble ourselves before God and we have to resist. Um, if you don't resist, man, then watch out because it's coming for you. Um, and you have authority. If you've received Jesus, if you've invited him into your heart, um, if you've given your life to him, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you, and that has far greater authority than anything the enemy can throw at you. But you still can partner with the Holy Spirit or that old sinful self, and I hope that you're going to partner with the Spirit. That's where there's life, and that's where there's peace. Um, some of you guys might find yourself... One second. You might find yourself in this position where you're like, that's where I'm at. I've, I've been letting my thought life wander and do whatever it wants to do. Some of you may be saying, like, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was even an option not to let my thought life do whatever it wants to do. I mean, I just thought I had no, no power over that, that it was just going to think and go wherever it wants to go. And so that's like news to you today. This is what I'd encourage you to do. I would encourage you to repent. So that word repent, it just means to turn away from and to turn towards something else. So you're turning away from that old way of thinking. You're turning away from those sinful patterns that are in your mind. And if you're walking away from a lifestyle um, that, that was consumed with things of the world, there, there is a pattern of thoughts that needs to be broken. And it can be broken through the power of God, um, but you have to break it. You have to begin that process of surrendering those thoughts to God. So you're turning away from those old ways of thinking and you're turning to the Spirit of God and saying, I want to follow you. I want to walk in step with you and, and I want to leave this old way behind me. So I'd encourage you to repent before God. Um, and to find somebody that you trust, man, find a leader in the group that you're in. And maybe you just need to repent some of those um, thoughts out loud, confess some of those thoughts out loud of this. This is, this is the thought process that continuously tries to take me out and I'm sick of it. Um, there is power when you expose darkness into light. Uh, it does lose its grip when you, when you do that. So if you're bold enough, if you're courageous enough, I'd encourage you to do that. But um, at least repent before God and man, cry out to him and, um, ask him to forgive you and then and then turn away from that old way of thinking. Um, in that same chapter in Romans chapter 8, um, verse 12 says, So then Christian, um, Christian brothers and sisters, we are not to do what our old sinful selves want us to do. Some translations say we have no obligation to our old sinful selves, which I love because I think sin wants you to think like, oh no, you have to. Like you don't have a choice. We've been doing this for too long. And I love how God's word is like, no, you have no obligation to it. If you do what your old sinful self wants you to do, you will die in sin. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you destroy those actions to which the body can be led, you will have life. All those who are led by the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit are sons and are daughters of God. You should not act like people who are owned by someone. They're always afraid. Instead, the Holy Spirit makes us his sons and daughters, and we can call to him, my father. For the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He tells us, 
and our spirit that we are the children of God. So the first thing is that we have to recognize that it's through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, that we can put to death our old selves. It's not something that we can do out of just willpower or desire to overcome. That's that's why I think a lot of groups sometimes don't work, whether they're addiction recovery groups or um, or whatever. They don't work because the Holy Spirit's not involved. And I, I don't know how you do it without that. I think all that is is behavior modification. It's not actually a work of transformation that's taking place on the inside. So recognize that, that this is a work of the Holy Spirit. But your part in this is to surrender every single area of your heart to him, to give those things over to him. And then you have to choose not to let it go. This is where walking in step with the Holy Spirit is so important. Each morning and you get up with the intention of like today, uh, is a day for me to spend with God. I don't I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what your job is. You can you can bring him into any of that. Um, I do, man. As I'm driving, I, I drive a lot for my job right now. So as I'm just in the car, that is key time for me to spend with the Holy Spirit. I worship. I put worship music on. I listen to messages. I pray. Um, you have to chase after God. But I promise you that as you do that, you will experience transformation. Just, man, just getting into God's word. This, this alone will, will transform the way that you think. And even if it's starting with um, just a little bit for each day, Proverbs has 31 chapters. You could start there. You could read a chapter every day of the month or, man, however many days, I'd encourage you every day. But allow God's word to get in your mind because that has the power to transform the way that you think. You're learning God's word the way that he thinks. And that will begin to transform the way that you think. I promise you that. Get in the word of God. I'm a worship leader, so I mean, I'm always going to push worship. But I believe that there is transformational power. I believe that there is spiritual warfare that takes place when you begin to worship. So, man, find worship that resonates with you. Um, Maverick City music is probably my favorite worship um, right now in this season of life. So, If you don't have any, like write that down, Maverick City Music, and look them up. There is just a power behind what they sing and how they worship. So um, so do that. Get in his word. Worship him. Pray. Just talk to him. And that is going to bring some transformation to you because it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you have to be connected to him in order for you to find that transformation. And the second thing, the last thing, is that you have to know who you are. You are a son, a daughter of God. That is how he sees you. He doesn't see you in light of your past. He doesn't see you in light of the sin that you did, man, an hour before you walked into this place. See, in his eyes, that's not who you are. That's not what he created you for. He created you with purpose. He created you with potential. He created you with plans. I know that people, oh man, they, they're awful at times. People will will label you according to some of the stuff in your past, and then they will limit your future based on the labels that they've put on you. But that is not how God works. And I'm sorry if you have experienced that from the church, um, from Christians. I'm sorry. I think sometimes Christians are the worst people at letting someone let go of their past and walk in what God has for them. But that is not the heart of God. He loves you. He sees you as a son and as a daughter and has plans and has just an incredible future for your life. He wants you today to let go of that old sinful self, to allow the Holy Spirit to transform the way that you think. So as we close out today, I want to do two things. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in you. You know how we talked about that it is him who does the work, but we have to invite him to do that work. And then I also just want to pray that um, that you can receive that identity as a child of God. That scripture we read, it says that the, that the Spirit of God testifies with our spirit that we're his sons and his daughters. So that's a work that God does. That's a spirit-to-spirit kind of work and connection um, that takes place. And so I want to pray for those two things as uh, we close out today. So if you can, let's let's pray. Close your eyes. I know it's a little weird because I'm through a video, but let's pray together. Yeah, well, Father God, we man, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are such a good father, a good dad. Yeah, we thank you that you do not limit us. You do not label us according to our worst moments, our darkest days. That's not how you see us. 
And Lord, I just pray for that to break open in hearts right now. That we would actually begin to believe that you see us with nothing but love. You see us as a father who is just wrapped up in his children, who fully delights in each one of us. God, help us to see you that way. Holy Spirit, God, I just, um, I thank you for your children that are on the other side of this camera. God, I thank you that you know them by name, that you've known them uh, from the moment that they were in their mother's womb. God, you've been watching them and paying attention to them. God, your word says that every time they sit down and every time they stand up, that you see them, that you're paying attention to them. God, we thank you that that is the type of God that you are. That is how much you love us. And I pray that, Holy Spirit, you would just absolutely saturate the room that they're in right now. That they would feel you, that they would feel your love, God, and that they would say yes to the invitation to let you in. To give you full control and full power in their hearts, in their minds, in their thought life. And that as they do that, that even now they would begin to experience a peace that they haven't experienced before. Hope that would rise up in their minds and in their hearts. I pray for boldness, God, to bring other believers in um, to confess things that need to be confessed in order to continue to walk in freedom. That as they leave this group tonight, that they wouldn't let go of the walk with you. That they would take it with them the next day and the next day. And learn just to know you more through your word and through conversations with you, God. Help us to know what it means to be your sons and your daughters. Spirit, Holy Spirit, we invite you to just speak that to our own spirit. That we're your sons and we're your daughters, God. And that changes everything. You hold nothing back from your sons and daughters. Everything that you have is ours according to your word. That's what you say about your children. So God, we submit all that we are to you. God, we surrender our lives to you, our thoughts to you. We want to make a difference in the world that we live in, and we know that that is going to start only through the power of the Holy Spirit that brings transformation in us first. So God, we give ourselves to you. We thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts and in our minds. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. God bless you.